Hello, this is another game that I played against an online computer. It's actually the same computer engine that I was um, playing before in my last video. And uh, well, the game itself is nothing spectacular, but I thought that it might be interesting to show anyway. So let's see. Well, my opponent, the computer, played Night to C3, and this was a three minute blitz game. So I'll try to explain the reason why I play it. So let's start immediately. Why d5? Well, I could play many moves here. I can play e5, e6, c5, and so on. Uh, d5 has the idea that I may want to play, for example, d4, but that's actually part of opening theory. I have seen many people play this. I've even say, seen e4. This is actually pretty common, actually. I see, I see this quite often. For some reason I tend to play d4 here and my opponents play almost every time they play knight back to e2. Well, not back to e2 because he never was there, but I mean it goes to e2. And here, well, you can play c5, you can play, I don't know, maybe knight to c6, but I believe the best and the easiest move is either c5 or e5, so let's say e5 for example. And the game will simply go along those lines. I mean, there will be, for example, knight to g3, let's say bishop e6, knight f3. So even though it looks like black push white back, but on the other hand, it's not that easy to actually do anything out of this. And yeah, uh, many people play this, so that's probably what would have happened if my opponent, the computer again, would have played differently. But in this game, he played d4, so I can't play d4, obviously. So I'm not afraid to get into that, but I suppose the idea with with that idea, I mean the e4, d4, knight to c2 idea, is that black is kind of uh, pushing his pawns way forward and overextending himself. I suppose that's one of the ideas anyway. Okay, so I'll play knight to f6. I have no idea whether or not this is still open in theory. Yes, it is. So let's see if knight to f6. Yes, it is actually the main move here. The most common move played, at least in my opening book. And here my opponent played e3. Which is actually on the last, I believe, in my book. It doesn't mean that it's a bad move. It's just that perhaps bishop to, to g5 is a better move. So e3 kind of, well, as you can see, it's very difficult to get this bishop out now. Okay. <clears throat> e6. Maybe I could have tried something else, but e6 is actually the main move here, believe it or not. I was thinking bishop f5 just to get my bishop out before e6. But there are other ways to get it out. e6, knight f3, bishop e2, oops, c5, I mean. Let's see if this is still open in theory. It is. C5 is still. So for some reason, I'm playing all the main moves without even knowing theory. Okay, C5. I suppose these, uh, these moves simply make sense. So uh, you might wonder what, what the name of this opening is. I have no idea. I think it's just the echo code I'm getting is D0, 0, 1, D4, D5, and usual line. So I don't know what that is. Okay, so Bishop E2. I played uh, knight to c6, still the main moves. Castles, and here I played. Uh, uh, yeah, the main move, well, the book move here is bishop d7, so I actually went out of book after a6. Why a6? Well, uh, maybe I want to stop, for example, sometimes I play bishop d6 and then. The computer sometimes plays knight to b5, and then I have to go back with my bishop anyway. So that's a, that's a, and also a6 prepares perhaps b5 at some point. Uh, knight to e5. Now notice that if I'm if I'm my bishop had been on d7, and after knight to e5, chances are that I would have to give up my bishop pair pretty early in the game. So knight to e5, I play bishop d6, takes takes. We are definitely out of book now. Okay, bishop d2. So perhaps bishop d5 was a better move, better move than e3 because, well, black's dark square bishop looks pretty bad. And also the light square bishop actually because it's standing on e2. So probably the, be the best move for the light square bishop would be f3, so bishop f3. But then on the other hand, I have a bunch of pawns in the center blocking that uh, bishop in any way. Even though 
I might actually open things up. So let's see, a castle. <clears throat> a3, B3, sorry, I mean C4. I keep looking at wise moves all the time. Okay, C4, why C4? Uh, well, being that this was a blitz game, it's kind of difficult to explain everything. Perhaps it would have been better to just play C takes D4, and let's say E takes D4, although that opens up the bishop. And then perhaps E5 or even C5. But sometimes white has knight to a4 or you know whatever i think uh, it would also open up the bishop simply i mean for example he takes back with the e pawn and then he can move this bishop and also this bishop will come alive very soon so uh, i'm not so sure if c4 uh, that was the reasoning why i play c4 but that's what i played and here b3 i took the pawn i took back and now c5 um, yeah and also a6 by the way stops knight to b5. Notice that, for example, if I play, if I hadn't play, played a6, the computer could have tried something like knight b5 here. So, uh, d takes c5, bishop takes c5. So I've managed to actually keep this bishop locked in, and even the other bishop, even though now bishop f3 is probably a, an okay move, or at least bishop d3. Yeah, just, I suppose uh, the, the light square bishop has more potential than the dark square at this point. B4, bishop B6, and here I was looking at something like knight to A4. Uh, that's probably the best here. Uh, instead of that, rook to C1. So I'll play bishop D7 just to stop knight to A4. Okay, I, he can still play knight to A4 because if I take, then just queen takes. So. Uh, queen C2, I'll play queen E7. Why queen E7? Uh, I had an idea here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the reason I played queen e7 was that I can't put my this rook on c8 because, well, there's a pawn hanging on a6. But if I play queen e7 first, I can put my other rook on c8. So that was my reasoning. Okay, rook f e1. Um, well, I don't know if that was necessary. Okay, I'll play rook c8. Queen d3. So this pawn is under attack, but uh, maybe well, I can also try something like bishop d1, bishop c2, and have something going on on this diagonal. But I'm well protected, so there's no way. And, and in the worst case, I can always play g6. Okay, I played a5. The reason I played a5 was to... Well, maybe I, I suppose I just want to get rid of that weakness. So if I manage to trade off that pawn for... Why B pawn or something, then that would be okay. So knight B5, uh, knight to E4, why not? I mean, uh, I think it's better than an F6. I can also take this bishop whenever I feel like it. And if you play something like F3, I can either take or go back. I can even go to D6. I'm not so sure if that would be a great idea though, because then if knight to D6, then perhaps E4. Okay, let's see what happened here. Rook takes c8. Mm, I think I was also looking at, at some point here, rook knight to c7. I think it was even early here somewhere. Um, ah, well, forget about it. I, I think I had something, an idea anyway. Okay, so rook takes, rook takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes. So white has a pawn on a3. A pass pawn, potentially dangerous. And let's see how many pawns. White, white has five pawns and black has five pawns, so equal amount. Queen d4, bishop d7, a4, h6. h6 is a useful move because you just never know what happens if you avoid any back rank ideas. For example, rook c1 or you know, queen b6, whatever. G3, I suppose, has the same idea, just to give the king somewhere to go in case something crazy happens. Uh, okay, and here I offer a queen trade. Uh, yeah, uh, so if, if king uh, queen takes queen, I have knight takes, followed by a threat. Well, I'm threatening to win the pawn on a4. And also, if uh, white protects the pawn, I can still take 
the pawn, uh, the knight on b5. Okay, let's see. F3. I took the queen. Queen takes. Pawn takes. Bishop takes b5. A takes b5. Knight to d6. And here, I think I was expecting something like rook to b1. But that didn't happen. So, uh, I'm, actually, I'm not even sure about what I would have done against that. Perhaps knight b7 or something. Just rush my king back. I don't think why uh, black is. And also, well, yeah, I mean, uh, for example, if rook b1, I can either go back with my rook or with my knight on c4. Hmm. And if he keeps pushing his pawn, I can always put my rook on b8, and there's just nothing he can do. So, okay, but that, that's probably what most people would have played here. But instead of that, the computer played b6, I played rook a2. Uh, yeah, okay. Bishop d3. Uh, we, we could have traded pieces here also, for example, if let's, uh, rook b1, for example, and if rook takes e2, then just b7, and I have to say, give up my knife with pawn, so. But then I think I would, but I won the pawn anyway, but because if, if uh, white allows that, then after knight takes b7, I'm up a pawn, but I was up a pawn. And while, not too many moves from here anyway. Bishop d3, if you press rook b1, I suppose. Rook b2, rook b1, takes, takes. And then now I'm trying to rush my king back. Uh, did something. Okay, let's see here. I'm just trying to figure out if why could have done something else here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't work. I'm just winning the pawn. I'm 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 just in time with my king here. So yeah, king f2. Notice that if black had. If the king would have been on g8, the game is just lost, okay? For example, if king g8 here, then we, then after bishop d3, king f8, bishop a6, king e7, and then just pushes the pawn and black is forced to give up the knight. So, but my king was not on g8, he was on f8, so I have plenty of time. King e7, after king f2, bishop d3, king d7, king e3, king c6, b7, and now I'm just picking up the pawn takes and black is just should be winning anyway especially off the the next move here check uh black well white is forced to give up the bishop for the knight because if he goes back i'm, I'm just picking up a pawn for nothing so bishop takes king takes king d3 king b4 king e3 king c3 yeah so i'm just picking up the pawn so here we, we just waited a couple of moves was going to make the first pawn move. Well, since I'm up a pawn, uh, there's no, no immediate rush to do anything. So, okay, g5. I just took, takes back, and now h5. And now the white king is forced to go somewhere away from protecting his pawn. So, if the king just anywhere, f2, I just win the pawn, and yeah, the rest is very simple. So, was there something else after f6? Not really. If uh, f5, for example, I can't even take like this. Uh, oops, let's see. f5. Instead of, uh, instead of g5, f5, yeah. I could have tried this. And there is no trick here of any kind, as you can see. And if h5, I can just take. And if something like this, I can just take. Yeah, so there's nothing there. So after f6, g5 is just as good as any other move, I suppose. Takes. And if he doesn't do g5, he has to move his king, and then I'll just win the pawn. So there really is no other way here. So g5 is the best, I suppose. And if f takes, uh, I suppose the easiest is, is to play h5, and now the king has to move again. And I'll just take and yeah, the game is just completely low, completely lost. So after f6, g5 takes, takes, h5, king f2, king d4, king takes d4, king f3, king d3, king f2, king e4, 
King G3 and King E3 and the computer is signed.